I found this adorable bunny tea towels set at Home Goods, and they were a little larger than the normal tea towel, but they were only six ninety nine for the pair. And the one had the beautiful bunny on the front, and the other one had a really nice border at the base. And I'm going to start by ironing both of them. Once they're both ironed, I'm going to connect the two of them. And I'm going to just go under the image of the bunny, and I'm going to make sure my ginghams are matching on both, and I'm going to pin that down. Now, tea towels are not always perfectly measured, like these two. One is actually a little bit bigger than the other, but I'm going to not worry about that. I'm going to just uh, pin it across just to make sure everything stays in place. And I'm going to use Surebond. Surebond is a glue stick that you could put in your hot glue gun, and it's meant for material, and it is washable. And I'm going to start by gluing on the underside I'm skipping over the pins, and this is just going to hold everything in place while I start taking the pins out. And just like anything, you want to wait for the glue to cool, and that's when it's going to adhere. Now I'm pulling the pins out, and I'm filling in those areas with the hot glue. I didn't want to just run across because I was worried about shifting the material and I wanted to make sure that you did not see the glue this glue is white in color so once this is all um set I'm going to flip over and kind of not can put it completely in half I'm so sorry with my camera, you can't see the entire thing, but I wanted about four inches of the gingham coming from the bottom when I folded it over. And then I'm gonna run the glue up the side and I'm using the stitching as a guide. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So at the top, what you're not seeing is about six inches of material that's not being glued. but you will see that in a second. So I'm leaving the top open. I'm not gonna glue that. And once this is cooled and set, I'm gonna turn this inside out. So now I have this little sack. So you see how I made sure that the gingham was about four inches from the bottom. And I created a square. So that's the bottom part. And then here's the flap at the top. Just like that. So I had this square pillow. You can get these right at Hobby Lobby or Walmart. And I just filled the, I put the pillow into the sack and just want to arrange it so that everything is where I want it to be. Make sure the corners are filled, especially at the bottom. And now I have this large flap and my plan is to flap it over, but I want to start by taking care of this extra material and making the sides on the flap even to the rest of the pillow. And I did this gluing on both sides. Once both sides were glued, I put my flap over. And then this way, so that I can remove the pillow and wash easier, I found these um, Velcro strips. I get mine right at my Dollar Tree. They come in white or black, and I picked up white, and I'm cutting them in half and taking one full one. Now, these are very sticky, but I just put my glue on there just for extra adherence, and I put one on the underside of the flap in the center, 
and then the halves on either side of the corners. And once I knew that it was in place in a good spot, I then released the backing of the second part of the Velcro and then glued that right to the, uh, the pillow. So now you have a Velcro opening and your pillow won't shift on you. Now to just, I found these buttons at the um, Dollar Tree. They came in nice spring colors and I took three of the pink ones and just glued them right over where my Velcro is. So it has the appearance that you have sewn buttons. And there you go. Now you have this adorable Easter pillow that you can remove the cover when the holiday is over. I really hope you enjoyed this video. For other tutorials, go check us out on YouTube. You can now watch all our videos at chocolateofancy.com. For any paint products, tissue paper, transfers, chocolateofancy.com. Thank you so much.